Welcome back to Ask Dr. Clark. Here is today's topic. Are there really that many narcissists? I hear that from a number of pastors, especially even Christian counselors who don't seem to realize uh, that there are quite a few. In a word, the answer is yes, there are that many narcissists. I'll explain why in this video. If you like my blunt, straightforward, biblical style in these videos, join our team by subscribing to my YouTube channel and tapping the like button and leaving a rating and a review and a comment. This helps us grow our audience and, and frankly have more impact. And if you're in a marital crisis, no matter what that crisis is, I can help you. After 35 years, I've got a plan for every single possible marital crisis. Go to the website, davideclarkphd.com, davideclarkphd.com to see all my resources, including my books and my phone advice service. 95% of my practice now is doing phone advice sessions. I'll get the background and give you a plan of action in 45 minutes. Now, today's question from a YouTube channel subscriber, and it's a good one. Dr. Clark, I'm married to a narcissist. I read your book, Enough is Enough. Yeah, good for you, all right? Little, little uh, promotion for me. And felt like you knew me and my husband. I have separated and I'm pursuing a divorce because he will not change, okay? Good for you. This is the choice. He's already made the choice for you. When you leave a man, an abusive man, once you leave him, and it's a secret plan, of course, that I cover and enough is enough, when, what he does from that point will tell you all you need to know. She continues, I talked to my pastor and he told me, and I've heard this a million times, he told me that I was overreacting, that I had no right to separate, and that narcissism is rare. My question is, are there really that many narcissists? My answer, yes, there really are that many narcissists. As usual, the Christian community lags behind. Your pastor, like many pastors and even Christian leaders and some Christian counselors, lives in denial. They want to believe narcissism isn't that prevalent because then they might have to do something about it if it really is a problem. They're not living in the real world. I mean, look around. Now, the truth is, even if there aren't that many narcissists, if you're living with one, I mean, who cares? You, you, that's your problem. But there are many narcissists out there and growing all the time. Listen to 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. The Bible speaks clearly about narcissism. How about this for a definition of narcissism? Paul, of course, talking to Timothy. But realize this, Paul says, that in the last days, difficult times will come. And if we're not living in the last days, my friends, I don't know where we're living. These are the last days. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Holy to a form of godliness, these are the people that are in the church and they look great on Sunday. They're not great. At home, they're disasters. Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power and avoid such men as these. Wow, okay. Well, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Paul is describing narcissists and telling Timothy there will be a lot of them in the last days. If there were only a few narcissists, Paul wouldn't warn Timothy about them. Why would he waste time, precious time in Scripture? Of course not. Since the 1960s, our country has been cranking out narcissists at an alarming rate. And if you're paying attention, you can notice. First, the, the sexual revolution. Free love, free sex with anyone, no consequences. That kind of started the ball rolling. The breakdown of the family. Millions of kids learning. They have to take care of themselves. They can only rely upon themselves. This breeds narcissism because the security of an intact marriage and family is important. Unless you're married to a, an abuser or a narcissist, then you got to get out. Our me, me, me society. What I think, what I feel is more important than what anyone else thinks and feels, including God, me. Taking God out of society. Have you noticed that? out of government, out of our schools, out of our universities. That always leads to narcissism because without God, it is about me. Children being spoiled by their parents. We now have decades, several generations of kids being spoiled. No discipline, no consequences. It's never my child's fault. Participation trophies. We have, our best friends are teachers and they, and they talk about how things have shifted over time. They've been at this 30, 40 years in their field and how, how 
you know, the, the kids are incredibly selfish, they're unruly, it's never their fault, and then when they meet the parents, it's like, oh, yeah, uh, here's the problem. And social media is a celebration of self, of narcissism. Look at me, look what I'm doing, look at my opinions, look at what I'm eating. If I have to see one more picture of someone's lunch, I'm going to scream. I don't need to see your half-eaten cheeseburger. That's not important. That's narcissistic, that's what that is, beyond being just dumb. So yes, narcissism is prevalent and it is growing. If you're living with a narcissist, that's why I wrote this book, Enough is Enough, because every narcissist is an abuser. Find a Christian therapist who understands narcissism and emotional abuse. You can do a phone advice session with me to confirm you are living with an emotional abuser. I get a lot of calls like that each week. Ladies and men, they want to make sure they want to do it God's way, which I agree, of course, biblically, taking the right step. They want to make sure, is this emotional abuse? After I hear 20, 25, 30 minutes, I can tell you if it is or not. Find a pastor who gets it. May not be your pastor. Create a support team and prepare to leave your narcissist. Now, if you're stuck in Christian codependency and feel unable to leave after you read the Enough is Enough book, which tells you exactly how to leave and defines narcissism, then you need, if you're codependent and you're stuck and I, I just can't and all these lies are in your head that keep you stuck, that's what 20 lies that keep you with your abuser is for. It's a great one-two punch very often. A lady will read enough is enough and, and, and not be quite able to put this into, into play. Okay, that's what 20 lies is for. All right, that is today's presentation.